The Miami Heat entered a new era. This is a building that people will remember. You know, I love Miami Arena, but it's time really to move on. Witness a fierce rivalry intensified. A fight is broken out between Morning and Johnson. I remember saying to him, do you know what you just did? And a lockout that would put a season in jeopardy. It's about what is a fair share between owners and players. It's almost like everybody's waiting for the bat phone to ring. Not even the league's best defender could prevent the Heat's most agonizing moment. Houston ducks under. Got it! This took all the air out of us. That shot changed the direction of this franchise drastically. A new home for the new millennium brings new hope. Alonzo Mourning! But an old foe conquers the dream and the era. Weatherspoon shot, no good! I knew walking off the court, it was the ending of an era. Welcome to Inside the Heat. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eric Reed. We continue our celebration of 20 years of Heat basketball with episode number four in this special six-part series. Heading into the summer of 1997, Miami had just finished their most successful season, 61 regular season wins, and their first ever trip to the Eastern Conference Finals. Now the Heat was focused on a different campaign, the quest for a new home. The whole new arena truthfully started the day we moved into the old arena. It really was not going to make it. The new arena was a very important part of the whole plan to make this team a significant part of the Eastern Conference landscape. It was a difficult process, how and who would control an arena, whether it would be downtown or in Broward. For a world-class Miami, change can start right here. We can turn this into a fantastic waterfront park. We agreed to go with a concept that Tony Ritter, who was running Knight Ritter at the time, he put a group together to lobby to get this thing done in the waterfront, and it got caught up in the referendum. But some politicians want to kill the new waterfront park. Vote no on question 284. Whether you were an assistant with the team or you know the head coach, everybody was doing their part to get the, this arena built. I'm Tim Hardaway. I play for the Heat, and this is what you want from me. The defending Atlantic Division champions began their 10th NBA season and their third with Pat Riley by winning 20 of their first 29 games. Can he get a shot up? Yes, he does! He did it! He did it! He did it! Tim Hardaway! Can you believe that man? While the heat was breaking through, a brand new waterfront arena was breaking ground. Supporters here at Monty has just had a victory toast because this one is in the bag. The new arena is going to be built. Let's get ready. This is a building that people will remember right here at the port, right next to Bayside. I mean, the whole scene should be spectacular. You won 55 games. You made it through the regular season. You won another division title. But we already learned at this point, it's not about what we get done in the regular season. It's about what you get done in the playoffs. You won't believe the intensity when you get in those playoff series and what it's like and how you're heart just freaking drops when you lose a game and how exhilarated you are when you when you win. The 1998 playoffs are here and as destiny would have it, it is the Miami Heat and the New York Knicks. The 1998 playoffs opened at Miami Arena and Tim Hardaway scored 34 points, leading Miami to a game one win. Hardaway step back jumper, kaboom! Two nights later, the Knicks evened the series with a 10-point win. And this best of five series is officially tied at one. The series shifted to the Big Apple. Miami battled back to win game three. For that moment, it was a great feeling. Miami had momentum. Welcome back to Madison Square Garden, game four, round one. The two teams had similar kind of styles. They would beat you up. They would grind it out. Nobody was going to back down. Facing elimination on their own home court, the Knicks were on the verge of winning by five, forcing a decisive fifth game in Miami. I looked at the clock and there's, there's no time left. There's a second to go in the game. I said, let's just get out of town, let's go home. And the next thing I know, they're toe-to-toe. -to -toe. A fight is broken out between Morning and Johnson. And Alonzo Morning and Larry 
We was playing it, and those two was yapping all game. They were rivals, and they were both fierce competitors. And you put the two together, and it was combustible. There's been black blood between Larry Johnson and Alonzo Mourning for a long time. I look down, and I see Jeff Van Gundy on Zoe's leg. I'm like, what are you doing? Jeff Van Gundy is hanging on to the leg of Alonzo Mourning. He looked like just this little kid hanging on to this great big tree trunk. The one image that stood in everybody's mind was the conversation after the ejection between Pat and Alonzo. I remember saying to him, do you know what you just did? Do you know what you just did, Zoe? I'll never forget the shot of Pat Riley outside the visitor's locker room at Madison Square Garden, leaning against the wall. I think that's the way the whole Heat Nation felt. We didn't have Alonzo Mourning, but the Knicks were playing without Patrick Ewing, so I felt like game five was still even. They came out ready to play. They made unbelievable shots after shots after shots. Starks and Oakley and uh, you know, Allen Houston, I mean, they had a great, great, great game against us. Beat us by 15. The postseason, with great hope and expectation, was suddenly done, and there wasn't a thing you could do about it. It was first taste of really having your hearts really broken. The NBA is going to you know, bring you to your knees. <laughs> It's going to lift you up into the heavens. I mean, that's the nature of competition. You can't make mistakes. It's probably the most important lesson that Zoe, you know, ever learned. We are a product of defining moments in our life. You know, the experiences, you know, those particular experiences, you know, define us as people and who we are today, you know. And that particular experience, you know, was a very humbling experience. You know, I was very remorseful. And it changed my whole mentality and approach to the game. Sometimes you have to, you know, you have to go through some adverse situations in order to be successful. Inside the Heat is brought to you by your South Florida Mercedes-Benz dealers. Love what you drive.